Alright, hello guys. Here we are. I'm showing, gonna show y'all how I make those nifty little double-ended stuff sacks. I've already gotten a little bit of it done because I can only do this in one take because I don't know how to edit stuff. So it forces me to get stuff a little bit done that way. So here's the the uh, webbing webbing pocket. And this it has elastic along one edge. I've already hemmed three edges with the elastic in it. And this will be the two uh, cord pockets. I've got elastic in here, but I haven't I haven't sewn it in yet because it's going to go on the edge. But there's elastic in there and elastic in that end too. So. First, we have to do the two channels, and how I do these channels is so that you have a fold like that, so that it's reinforced on, you know, it's not just a straight up thing. So how I do that is I fold it over and with wrist rip stuff it's real nice and easy because you don't have to worry about measuring so much you just count circles or count squares and the way you do it you start in start in you know an inch or two or something in from the edge And then I kind of cheat because I go over it. All right, now that I'm down here, what I do is I take this corner that's flipping the lane here. I tuck it under with my thread puller, or you can use a chopstick or a stick or a screwdriver or whatever you want to use. But then what I do is I see is I follow the ripstop edge down here, and that's where I put my fold. And I hold that there and then I push up until it folds in the right folds in flat. And what that'll give you is you'll have a 90 degree angle between here and here and a 45 between there and there. Let's pull you all in so you can see that real good. So you've got a 90 degree here and a 45 here. And that mean that makes it so that there's two layers of cloth inside right here, so that'll be nice and reinforced. So then holding this here, I just run over it. And the way I do it is I run down to the end and then I just turn around. And it gives me two rows of stitching all the way down. And remember I didn't start all the way at the end at the, at the beginning so I have to do the other end still. So I just come down here Then do the same thing. I tuck it in. Make sure it's folded over the same amount as up here. And then I just pull it in. Hold it down. And stitch away.
And it doesn't have to be, you know, spot on exact. So that way I have two rows of stitching all the way along the edges of my stuff sack. So now what I need to do is that's that's the inside seat. So go to the outside. And here's my my uh, webbing pocket. So what I need to do is find the midpoint on it. So all you have to do there, that's real easy. You just fold it over and pull out your silver sharpie, the most awesome little sharpie in the world. And put a little mark on there. I actually should have put that on the outside, so there. That'll be on this inside the seam allowance, so it won't really matter if it's on the inside or outside. And then I need to do the same thing on on the stuff sack body. And all that really does is allows me to center it. Center the pocket from one end to the other. So, and since this isn't, uh, Mm, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so you do is you start in the middle, and you come out, and you just tuck it in. Pull your thing out before you get to the thread, so you don't punch anything, you know, sew over your, your stitcher, your thread puller, oh, that's when I get some more resection of that, there you go. And then you turn out. And you just follow the follow the ripstop grid. And with and with a shot cord like I have in here, it's a little bit tricky going under the foot. It doesn't like to do it. Kind of ornery that way. And once you're back in the seam allowance, you come down to the other side. And do the same thing. Pop a little pleat in there. And then a little more. Pop another one in. What I should have done was done this, then sewn the uh, shot cord in. So I have a feeling that my shot cord is going to be too long for how much pleats I put in there. Yeah. See. So when when I pull that straight, I still have a gap. So um, one way to fix that would be to pull the stitches off of here where I folded it in pull some shot cord out, cut it off, and sew it back. 
but I'm not going to bother with that right now. It's just going to be a little floppy. And if that's the thing with these. They're really... I don't hardly measure anything. Um, the only thing I measured on this one was the the length and the width of the bag because that's how big I knew I had to make the, the bag for that hammock. Alright, so that's the one. And just remember that should should have been tight, so <laughs> Never mind that. Alright, we're dealing with the pocket compares. Alright, so here's our uh, the two K uh, uh, the cord pocket. So I need to find the midpoint on this one too, so I do the same thing. I mark it with my Sharpie. Then I come down here on the stuff sack. Mark my midpoint. And this one's a little simpler. It's not as hard to mess up. Or not as easy to mess up. But you do the same thing. Start in the middle, inside the seam allowance. For me, I usually use about a quarter inch seam allowance, maybe. And this one, you're just pleating however much you want. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. It's not like the other one where you have to pleat the same amount as the as the uh, elastic. Listen, I'm pleading quite a bit actually. Alright, so the last bit I won't pleat. Now remember, I have a piece of shot cord in here, so I need to get it into the seam allowance so that it scrunches up and gets sewn into the hem or the seam. So I, sc I scrunch it up and sew it in. I could I could have just as easily just turned around and gone back down the same line, but I didn't really feel like it, so I didn't. But it, does, it doesn't matter, you can do that if you want. It's going to get sewn over again because this is going to be in our, in our seam when we sew the bag together. The only thing you really have to worry about with pleats is making sure that you don't displace your fabric to the left or right as you hem as you pull it in. But that's as long as you feed it in straight, that's not a problem. It's pretty easy to avoid. Same thing here. Scrunch the the last the shot cord into the path of the right. So 
there's that. Now, I need to do the other side in the middle. So what I do the middle, the middle is really easier actually. You just start on the on the, uh, the little sharpie mark you put for the middle. And what you can do is put a little sharpie mark, just little dots of sharpie, following a grid line. On the inside, you shouldn't have done it like I did there because that'll show. Crap. Oh well. And just line them up. Pop it up every, every couple, every little bit. And once you get out a little ways, you can. Now, this is really easy to pleat in. Because all you gotta do is the same thing. And when you get out to the end. Turn it 90. You're going to have a lot of extra fabric here because you've scrunched it this way and you've scrunched it this way. So, all you do here is you follow your grid lines down and try and pleat in the same amount as you did on the other side, on each side, so that they're pleated the same way on either side. And what you can do just put a little dot from on the bottom sheet from the grid line to where your corner is going to be. Your corner is going to be right about there. So that's that's how that's how much pleat I need to take in about an inch. So I just start tucking away. On this side, it's a little, this side, it's a little easier to get displaced as far as left and right goes. Are you guys think do you have a lighter or one of those little flammable things? Wow, I actually made that catch. How do you see it coming? Yeah. Come 
down in the middle, cut it off. And there you go. Double pleated pockets. Nice and roomy. Now, just put it all together. You make sure all this stuff's tucked away away from your seam allowance here. Fold it in half. And sew them down. Voila! That's how you do it after 22 minutes. <laughs> I'll probably find a way to speed that up. You got your pockets. What I like to do is put some sort of a either a uh, either a loop of of a paracord on here to keep the stress off the seam here and direct it down. Um, but what I did on my last one was edge it with grain, and when I got to the end, I just did an extra inch and a half or two, folded it over, sewed it back to itself, and that was my loop. And that worked out very nicely. I think I'll probably do that with this one. But I have hopefully entertained you for long enough, and I will stop here.